But getting back to this game that I never left. Well, I understand that because let me let me make this clear. Uh, Ron, you and you and uh, Virgil have the liberty, you know what I mean, to speak. But I know certain stories can't be spoke on, you know, live on air. Right. But for the stories right. that can be spoke on, you know, to basically define the character, because I want the youngsters, you know what I mean, okay, to have a character. Okay, let me give you a good one. Yeah, they had a player's ball, right, in the LA. So, uh, Don Magic One got a thing called church and they carry them cups, right? Yeah. So, uh, 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 it was a big old after hour thing, I mean, big old, uh, uh, play ball going on in Hollywood, right? And so, I got there, I had my, 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 God bless my wife, rest in peace, she was with me, John Law was with me, we was all in the party at the, on, on the stage, right? So, uh... Do be told all of this from the West Coast. Check this out here, man. If I walk around this club and see you West Coast with them cups in your hand, I'm gonna slap the shit out you like you, my. I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna do a circle, a 360 degree circle. And if I come back and you got them cups in your mother, I'm slap the shit out of you, one of you. You understand that? And lo and behold. When he walked around the corner, the nap back around that that, that club, and now had now cook in a mother's hand from the West Coast. <laughs> and that's a true story, you man. Now, you might have been told that already by Gangsta Brown earlier, but that's what he told every last motherfucker well, from the West Coast. Well, that he was at that. He said something, but you just sat up there and put a cherry on top because you didn't. He didn't say that uh, Doobie was getting ready to smack the mother dingleberries out of everybody's ass if they had the mother cups in their hands. See, see, but, and then also, it, uh, Doobie had a thing about if you wasn't no hell of a n and you was getting a trophy, yeah. he was going to challenge him. He was going to challenge that. He whooped the n on stage. He, he said, n if I can't find nobody here to tell me why you deserve this trophy, nigga, I'm whooping you on this stage tonight. So he said, anybody in the audience know this? They say, uh, nobody said, no, we don't know who we are. The next thing I know, boom, bam, boom, bam, boom, bam, boom, 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 bam, 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 boom, bam, 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 bam. I said, God damn. <laughs> God damn. Right. Do me, boy. Right. Tell you, man. He meant anything, anything he said, he meant that. Right. I had a problem. I got a problem going on right now with this Empire shit. So I was pretending to be Terrence Howard on the radio, right? So they already had me and Doobie pitching flashed on, on TMZ. So the got on, on, on the uh, uh, radio and said, that's why Denzel told me to beat your ass. And Doobie said, yeah, all right. I say, does he know who I am? And he know that's my partner. And nobody going to put their hands on Ron New. Now I'm out of here. Going to touch him because he ain't did a motherfucker thing but told a story to that nigga that took his story. So now ain't nobody going to fuck with him. And I said that. Right. Right. And he said that on J. King radio station. Now I told him, he said it to everybody that was listening. Yeah. Well, he, don't give me my he was a straight up general soldier. Huh? Yeah. He loved me. Yeah. And he loved Virgil. He told Virgil before he left here, you see that little old right there, man? He wild as fuck. Just like me. He said, man, look out for him. And Virgil was trying to figure out what he mean by that. What's going on? I said, Virgil, he's sick. My mom sick, man. Trying to yeah, he, yeah, he, he told Virg, he told Virg, you see that mother right there? I love that That's, That one right there? I love that mother right there, Virg. Look out for him. Am I lying, Virg? Yeah, because uh, we had some real deep stories, you know, we, we talked, you know. He told me a whole I, lot of things. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I had me able to get ready far, to do a, a reality show together with Mona Scott Young. And uh, we got footage with Doobie uh, on the footage, too. I'm going to put that out 
where we was getting ready to do the show, I was get out. Do me say, Ron, my biggest dream is to be a movie star now. Get me on with you, baby. So I got him on. He did get to show him on TMZ with me. And then we was in a pilot with Mona Scott Young. Got a million and a half dollars for the for the show. And next kind of some kind of way the show didn't happen. They say we all act a fool. I don't know if we did or not, but the show didn't happen. But Doobie, I do got footage of Doobie uh, with my children and us doing a couple of episodes. So we got three or four episodes with Doobie really spitting the peas and cutting the teas, man. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. As you know, some of y'all already knew this, but uh, just in case if you didn't know this, I want you to know. Um... Basically, Ron, when was the first uh, first time, what age was you when you first drove your first Rolls Royce? I bought my first Rolls Royce in 1966. I was 16 years old. I bought it from Galloway Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, hold, on. Angeles, California. hold on, Ron. You just, hold on, Ron. You just came. I didn't buy it from Frank Sinatra's, but it, it was supposed to be Blue Eyes, uh, Silver Cloud, I bought from a uh, 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 Galloway, a uh, Rolls Royce on Santa Monica. They don't call it, I don't know if they still call it Galloway, but yeah. the Rolls Royce place is be there on Rodeo on Road Drive. Yeah, I was 16 years old. Uh, uh, a madam named Mother Dear Teresa out of San Francisco gave me the game. That's who turned me out. I was turned out by a madam. Ain't no one turned me out. I got a godfather here and I got a godfather there, but ain't no lace me like she laced me. That's why I was laced so good. Cause she told me, you got to have a flash in the class to win the game, baby. She said the nigga with the most toys in the head is the winner. Touch everything you can touch so you can win. And so it, I went over and did it. I did it before Michael Jackson did it. I had monkeys, lions, That's true. tigers, all that shit. Before Michael Jackson never thought about it. Michael Jackson, when I spent it, the, uh, when I uh, when I uh, hung out with Joe Jackson and lived in, uh, hung out at Michael's house, Michael came to me and said, "Man, your kids won't speak on you. They they, they quiet about everything you do. Can you tell me what you do?" I said, "Man, I'll tell you what. I was in a movie called The Mac. If you want to see who I am, I was a school criminal. And next thing I know." Mike got the videotape and saw me in that white suit, that white hat. He was doing smooth criminal right after that. Right, right. <laughs> Dig that. Hey, but I want, that's why I wanted you to stop there because we can't just say that and just move on as if that's just some regular ass shit. Did you hear this man right. say that he was in a Rolls Royce at the age of 16 years old? 16, 16 years old, driving in a Rolls Royce that Frank Sinatra used to drive. Come on, man. That's that shit platinum, man. You know what I mean? That's unheard of. You know? Bay Area, yeah, stand but up. They hate, but, they, they, but they be hating on that because sometimes they don't want to give a his real fair play, man. You know, Virgil, uh, Filmo Slim saw it. He already endorsed it. He already knew about it. Virgil knew about it. Well, he met me when I was young and I come to Fresno and met him. They all knew I had a Rolls the first what, pimp player gangster in a Rolls Royce. So anybody did it, I did it. <laughs> and you know, Virgil and them got Rolls Royces and all that shit now. But I was driving a Rolls Royce for anybody. Now, if I'm wrong, correct me, Virgil. Oh yeah, he drove those roses. I come to the circle driveway. See, Ron was at my house in 1971. <laughs> he come to my house. He left. I didn't see him no more since 1970. You know, I just had to be on that end. We come down, and my partner said, "Man, let's go to Ron's house and party tonight." I said, "Ron, in here." Pull up that he's dope on the circle driveway. Matt is sitting up on the hill. Like this <laughs> <laughs> go up the steps. Go up in there. My father said, just everybody there from San Francisco, uh, 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 Oakland. Uh, it's a very big party. <clears throat> so I sit off into the office chair, the chair, the king chair. This particular time, Rob's not in there. So Rob come out, he's moving slow. This time, I'm worried about seven, about seven. Three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars of jury. That's kind of, I say, was, was a lot of jury right then. So Rob looking at me, saying, who is this? Come in my chair. 
So it's probably, it's probably say, that's uh, that first, you don't remember Virgil? Well, he hadn't saw me in years. He walked up, looked at me slow and looked, went back into the room. You can tell him when I get you, Virgil, I don't care. He come, he come back, no, I don't want to say it. I'm going to let you say it. You can say it, Virgil, I've already done my time, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come back and sit a kill blow right on my lap. So you can do what you want to do with it. <laughs> a yeah. whole kid, a flake of that shit. Yeah. Look like diamond. Do it. Do what you want to do with it. I told him, do whatever you want to do with it, player. Hold on. You hold on. Nineteen seventy-six. Oh. You know what? Please, that boy went back in nineteen seventy-six. Nineteen seventy-six is when he trying to tell everybody that I dropped almost two keys of coke on the table and told him it's yours. Do what you want to do with it, baby. <laughs> and imagine that I had ten bedrooms, a twenty-four seater king's table, and when I come out my room, Virgil was sitting in my king's chair. So I said, "Well, if he got that much nerve, then I might well just give him the whole thing, because ain't nobody else sat in my chair." With yeah, Virgil, with all that, he had about that. half a million dollars for jury on. That's in 1976. Right. 1976. 1976. I had one of the biggest houses in Oakland Hills. Attorney John Ferris bought my house after I got out of the sold it. That the lawyer that does all the big lawsuits in Oakland, he bought my house for his wife. I hope you guys live as long as you want. And never want as long as you live, man. Y'all be blessed now.